What's up guys, Weather Wednesday, coming at you with another Raid Shadow Legends video, and today I'm going to be grading every legendary champion in the Banner Lords faction. Now, when it comes to how I'm going to grade this faction, it's going to come down to one thing, and it's how valuable are these champions overall in the game? How many places can they be used? And how important are those places? Most legendary champions in the game can be used somewhere. In fact, most of them can be thrown into a, at least a Faction Wars team. But that's not very impressive being able to be used in Faction Wars. It's not that hard to throw together a Faction Wars team if you've been playing long enough. When I want to see value out of champion, it's going to be either an important dungeon, Doom Tower, or, of course, an arena, or in a clan boss, either the Demon Lord or Hydra. Faction Wars, not that important. So let's get right into it. And I'm going to start off with Lord Champfort. Now, this guy doesn't have a ton of places in the game, but he does have an important place in the game. And that is because he has a shield, a decreased attack, a decreased accuracy, and a decreased defense. Put that together, and he makes for a solid Iron Twins team. And that's an important part of the game because that's how most of us get our blessings for our champions. Unless you're a Kraken or Whale, you're a big spender, that's probably where you're getting most of your blessings, other than from tournaments and events. Next, we have Sathalia. I have pulled her, and I do not use her. Wait, I forgot to grade the first champion. I'm going to give him an A-. minus. Very good for a very important part of the game, but not that valuable elsewhere. Sithalia. I do have her. I don't use her because she's been power crept quite a bit. Now, she has some turn meter control. She's got block debuffs, a pretty useless HP burn. But I would rather just build a Madame Ceres than a Sithalia. And that's if you're not afraid of getting sheeped. So I don't feel like she's got a huge place in the game. But if you need somebody to uh, strip buffs, say, on Doom Tower waves or <clears throat> any other dungeon or even an arena, you can use her for that. But like I said, I would rather build an epic Madame Ceres if you have her, then wasting a bunch of books on Sathalia. So I'm going to give her a C. Now, when it comes to Killian the Lucky, the best thing that this champion does, even after receiving a buff, is empowering Rhonda if you have Rhonda. Now, if you look at a lot of these kits for these champions, they can sound pretty interesting, but does it translate in the game? He's got a stun, he's got a block active skills, he's got a decreased speed. Those sound like pretty valuable things, but where is he used? I don't know of a place where anybody says, oh, I definitely need Killian the Lucky to take down this part of the game. I don't think he fits anywhere. I'm going to give him a D. Uh, when it comes to Sigmund the High Shield, uh, this was a fusion champion. And, you know, he's basically a tank. He's got a shield and a strength in. He's got a provoke that can be used. But, again, I don't think that he is used because I think there are simply better provokers out there. And so for that reason, I'm going to give him a D. But then it comes to Rhonda. She is amazing. She is amazing. Uh, basically, any type of arena, 
So you got arena, tag team arena, live arena. She is terrific. Um, she's got this amazing ability to block passive and active skills. She hits pretty hard. And she's got this three time hitter too. Some people can use her in some Fire Knight situations, uh, but mostly she's an arena champion and she's pretty great at it. I'm going to give her an A+. Plus. Uh, Black Knight. Uh, he's got a heal. He's got increased defense. Again, he has a provoke. Pretty simple kit. He's got this interesting unkillable situation going on, but he doesn't really see a lot of use in the game. And for that reason, uh, you know, I'm going to give him a D. Then we get to Staltus Dragonbane. This champion is amazing. He is one of the best champions for Dragon Hard 10. He's got increased defense, decreased crit damage, decreased speed. He's got a stun. He he hits really well. You know, he's a good damage dealer in arena as well. Uh, if I were to pull one, I think I would just use him personally. Mm, I would focus on using him in Dragon, but he has potential in Arena as well, so you can really use him in either situation. So I'm going to give him, I'm going to give Staltus an A plus as well. Now, Manaya, she's just a really boring healer with a block debuff and a shield there are epics who do this job just fine nobody uses Manaya. I mean, she's a little bit better if you have coronar on the team but if you're pulling voids you definitely don't want to be pulling coronar uh so for that reason i'm gonna give Manaya a d minus now helior uh, I pulled fairly recently, and I haven't really touched him. Um, what do you do with this guy? He he transfers debuffs. He's got a shield. There's just not enough to him to make him viable. I'm going to give him another D. Lugan, I pulled him quite a while ago now. Um... When you read his kit, you think he's pretty good. He's got a block active skills with an increased defense and ally protection. He's got a shield, but you know, outside of faction wars, there are just so many better options. Uh, you know, where where are you using this champion? You know, like I said, you know, if you if you don't have a real use outside of faction wars, I'm gonna give you a D. That's just the way it is. Now, when it comes to Septimus, this used to be one of the favorite champions in the game. For old school players, they always talked about Septimus and how great he was for like Spider 20. Uh, just uh, hit insanely hard. But nowadays, it's a lot harder to find any usage for him. Uh, you know, there are there are ways to to fit him in, but Really, I don't think he finds that much use in the game anymore. I'm going to give him a C. Uh, Richtoff the Bold. I pulled him not too long ago. Uh, he has a poison. Which is just fine for Dragon or Clan Boss, Demon Lord. Uh, I think that there are a ton of better options than him. But he is an option, so I'm going to give him a C. Uh, Raglan is a void legendary reviver which would be exciting if it wasn't a single target revive if you just turn this into revive all allies i think she would find a lot more usage but you know she also has a cleanse and a heal she's good but she's not top tier i'm gonna give raglan a b 
you can find you know some usage for her with you know a tanky go second team but she's not the best now baron for a moment he was probably the top nuker in the game and he's still very high up there uh there's a few champions better than him now but if i pulled a baron i'd still be pretty excited he's got to be a top five nuker probably and so that for that i'm going to give him an s minus uh, then you got Terrace talking about better nukers, uh, possibly the best nuker in the game. Uh, if you pair him with the next champion, Mariska, uh, pretty much they've, those two, those two champions have been the meta for nearly a year now, you know, obviously an S plus champion. He's also viable as a top nuker in Hydra. So he's obviously amazing. And then as you can see, Mariska is one of three Void Legendaries that I've ever pulled after over two years playing this game. And she's amazing. I use her everywhere. And <laughs> I, I don't use her on my Demon Lord Clan boss team because I already had one and I built her. But you could. I use her in Hydra. I use her in Doom Tower. Uh, I use her in all kinds of arena situations. I use her in several of the dungeons. She's amazing. She's S plus for sure. And now we get to the final champion in the Banner Lord Legendary section, and it's Quintus the Triumphant. This is the champion that very few players in this game have. You get him from Live Arena, from reaching a certain level. Not very many people have gotten him, but those who have say he's very mediocre. Now, if you could just pull him and you were an earlier mid-game player, you might really like him. The problem is that nobody who has him likes him. Let's look at his ratings. His highest rating is a 3 in arena offense. And there's a reason for this. Because out of all the players who have him, every single player who has him has a ton of better options than him. He does not fit in the game. He needs a tremendous buff because he's not worth acquiring. Nobody who has him uses him. And for that reason, he is getting an F. He is an F tier champion because he has no place in the game. He is a champion that only Krakens have and Krakens hate him. That is a straight F. So, those are my grades for these champions. Tell me where I'm wrong. I guarantee I'm wrong about something. I bet you have a special place in your heart for one of these champions. I'd love to know where you use them. Personally, out of all these, you see that I have six of these champions. I only use Rhonda and Mariska, and they're both amazing. Mariska is more amazing. But Rhonda is amazing too. And if you know, if I could choose any more of these, I would love to get a Taurus, obviously, a Baron, definitely, and a Staltus too. Other than that, I don't really need anybody else here. That's my perspective. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you head on out. And I'll check you out with more Rage Child Legends videos. Peace.